Canva has just released their latest update and it is an absolute game changer. There's so many things that Canva can do already, as we all know, for doing pictures and all sorts of other graphic design. But with the release of their new AI coding feature, you're going to be able to code your own little apps within Canva and you're not going to need to know how to do some code. Well, let's have a look at some examples that I've created because I think they're pretty exciting. Even though they're not necessarily the most exciting application, it shows you what you can be doing. So first thing you'll notice about Canva now is we now have this window. We have Canva AI at the top here. When we click on that, you'll see code forming. And now you can type what you want to do in here. And you can see some examples down the bottom here. Create a pricing calculator, make an interactive menu, create an interactive flashcard game. All you need to do is actually type what you want to do. So I've got an idea to do a calculator. So I'm going to copy the address of this website and I'm going to come back here and go create an SEO calculator. So I'm going to type into this box, right? On SEO calculator like this one. And I'm going to paste it in there and presto, and we'll wait and see what happens. So here we go, and off it goes, and it's coding. And as you can see, my hands are in the air. I'm not doing anything. This is the new face of coding. This is where you don't actually need to code to be able to create things. Now, it's not necessarily in-depth code, and we're not talking about huge websites here, but for creating things like interactive forms, interactive training, all sorts of things like that, you can use this coding. So we're going to leave that running, and I'm going to show you some examples. So once you've actually created your code, you'll find them listed here, and you can go back and edit them. So you can see in this first one, make an interactive form that asks these questions and sends answers to my web address. This is my intake form. And it does that for me. And what happens is I get this beautiful form, which is all laid out and I can put all my answers in here and I can send this to a client and go next and away it goes, it gives me the next one. It was all done. And when you get through to the end of number nine, he comes up with it asks for their name and email address and phone number. And then it sends it all to me in an email. So I've created a fully interactive form without actually having to do any coding. All I did was paste the questions I wanted to ask in here. It even went through and added all these little please select things in it. So really clever without me having to tell it what to do. Now the great thing is that I can come back here and I can actually tell it to change something. So please make form ink. So it's going to go away and it's going to actually recode this. And here it goes, and off it goes, and it's coding. So while it's doing that, let's come back here, and you can see you're up to 295 lines of code already, and it's only been 30 seconds to a minute. And again, of course, my hands are up here. I can't code one edit. In fact, I can't code at all, except for HTML. And it's working out all of the aspects of the code. This is going on the new version of that, and we'll leave those running. Just to review, the form, as you can see, is blue with blue. And I've asked it to go pink. And you can see pink progress bar, pink buttons, pink navigation. It's going to go through and recode that. Okay, so it's still continuing. And just checking back to our original one. This SEO calculator is still going. Almost there. See here, keyword, best keyword, affordable keyword, all sorts of information going into this form. This one's still going. So let's have a look at another example. I asked it to create a car lease calculator. So I want to buy a car that's 55000 I've got a deposit of $5,500. The lease term is 60 months. The interest rate is actually at, say, 7.3%. And the residual value, I actually want about 45 because it's a car lease, and at the end, I want to get a certain percentage back. It tells me that my monthly payment is $494 and a total lease cost will be $59.86. Now, I'm not sure of the actual maths there, but I'm sure if I gave it the actual real figures, I could cross-check it, make sure it's right. So let's take the deposit away and now you'll see that I have a monthly payment of 603 So that's actually working within a web page. 
So I can actually embed that in my website or I can send people to this page to use that. The next one I did was I wanted to create a boxing timer. So a boxing timer is pretty simple, isn't it? It's a countdown timer that will count down and reset every certain number of minutes. So I asked it to make it so I can adjust it and make the minutes certain lengths and then have a start button. You can hear it's got the bell. And in this case, I went and got the bell from here, this MP3. I just pasted that link in and it created the bell. I've got a stop button. I've got a reset, which just resets this one. And I've got a clear that clears the total time. So you can actually track how many minutes you've been doing total. Or you can just stop halfway through a round and hit reset. So nice and simple. And again, I published it to the web and that's available publicly. Anyone can go and see this. And if you want to look at this one or the other ones that I've put up, please just have a look in the area below and in the description, I'll have it in there for you. So let's go back and see what's going on over here. This SEO calculator is still going now up to 692 lines. Sorry, digital marketing one's up to 716. This one's up to 880. So I'm going to obviously freeze this and come back to this in a minute. Okay, our SEO calculator has finished coding and we can have a look at what it does. Now, I have no idea what it's come up with, but it says over on the side here, calculator includes four main tools, keyword analysis, SEO score, backlink checker, and keyword intensity. So let's put this in here. AI marketing. Analyze. It's bringing me back search volumes and all sorts of things. I wonder where it's getting that data. Fascinating. Oh, it's using example data, so I'd have to give it proper data. SEO score, page yes. to web marketing, com, which is me. And away it goes and gives me an 84 page speed mobile friendliness. So it's finding some errors there. Single H1, like giving me some ideas. Backlink checker. Oh, lots of backlinks and referring domains. You can see you would need to connect this up to something, obviously, and then obviously keyword density. So it looks pretty cool. It does a range of things. It's not exactly like the one that we looked at originally. This is actually a cost calculator. So it didn't really go for what this page said exactly. And I think that's where I made the mistake. I didn't really tell it what to do properly. Think about that when you're telling your AI what to do. So the second one, we were doing our digital client intake form. And I wanted it pink, and you can see that it's now put a pink gradient at the top. It's made all the buttons pink and everything is working well. So again, you can come back and you can adjust these, and then I can go using a design, and I can, of course, then publish to the web. And it's going to give me my website address, so I publish that. And it does that for me, so it makes the web page for me. I don't even need to do that. It gives me a URL. And I can visit the website. And there's my working form. Now, when I tested this form, one of the things that I noticed was that it actually didn't work in real life. And when I came back and asked, oh, everything looks good, but it did not send an email. And it's come back and said, I'll clarify the email functionality works in this form but the current implementation doesn't actually send an email. So I need server-side component and all that. So it will actually allow you to host that on your own web server and you need to put in a few more form bits and pieces. So while it looks good, it's actually not necessarily functioning. So be aware of that. Test things out and make sure they're actually working. So for some things like making digital flashcards or games and all those sorts of elements, you can have no problems there. Other things, you will find that there's actually errors and occasionally you'll find that there's problems with that. If I go to code me and I can go here, make an interactive flashcard game, create a color accessibility simulator, code a 3D game. Again, it's up to you what you do. You can do all sorts of things and you can have a lot of fun doing it. The last thing I'd like to show you is this one. And this is my game of Space Invaders and it coded all of this and it allows me to play Space Invaders. You can see the bombs dropping and you can see the aliens going back and forth. All very cool, but a great test. So you can code games with this. You can do all sorts of things. So that's what's going on with Canva code. Have a play with it. See what you can come up with. 
please like and subscribe to my channel and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.